Hey guys, it's Jordan from GB1590 Reptiles. <laughs> And in this video, I'm going to be teaching guys the basic care for corn snakes. So there's going to be three basic parts you could say that I'm going to go over and I'll go a little bit more into detail about each of them. So the first one is going to be enclosure, which will include the size of the tank, substrate to use, how many hides, temperature, and humidity. Next thing is going to be feeding, so I'm going to teach you um, basically the proper size mouse to feed, how often to feed it, when to switch the size of the mouse, or how many you're giving to the snake. And then the last part I'm going to be talking about is basically just some facts and some tips. Um, and I'll just go more into detail into that so that I don't give it all away at this moment right now. So I'm going to be putting a... Um, care sheet in the description below that I created myself and so you can use that and just remember that this video is only on basic care and this is just one care video that I've made please check out other care videos other care sheets as well talk to um, some breeders maybe or some other pet stores to get some more information okay so here is blizzards 40 gallon terrarium and there's Merlot's 30 gallon terrarium so for the size for an adult, um, just a single adult, it will be 40 gallon terrarium and for hatchlings, probably about a 20 gallon or um, anything a little bit smaller. For the substrate, I recommend using the Zoomed uh, Aspen bedding. It's really good, it absorbs, it absorbs uh, sorry, um, liquids very well and it's not that dusty when you're cleaning out the tanks. Always make sure that you at least have two hides and a water dish in there, so have one on the cool side and one on, one on the warm side. Um, I have one with Merlot down there too, and always make sure that you have fresh water, like I said. Always make sure to have a thermometer in the tank. I usually have mine right below the basking spot, and try to make sure the basking spot is from 86 to 90 degrees. Never go over 90, and even 90 can be a little bit too warm for corn snakes. And, of course, that is Fahrenheit, by the way, not Celsius. Um, also, for humidity, the humidity that is in our homes and stuff is pretty much good for them, except when they're going into shed. So, when they are going into shed, make sure to either have a humidity hide, like I have right there from Merlot, or what I do with Blizzard is I just take her out and I just mist her lightly once a day until she sheds. And if you need any more tips on how to help your snake shed, check out the first video on my channel called How to Help Your Snake Shed. We'll get started on some feeding tips. Alright, so here is Merlot, my ultra blood red corn snake. And she is currently eating one large fuzzy. And pretty soon, um, if the pet store I work at gets some smaller fuzzies, I'm going to be giving her two of them. So some tips for the feeding and stuff is basically the size mouse that you should be feeding should be no more than one and a half times the thickest part of their body, which means that you shouldn't have, like that's probably the thickest part of her body right there, so I shouldn't be feeding her mouse that is much larger than the thickest part of her body, like I said, so nothing too much bigger than this part right here. Um, when you should bump up the type of mouse or how many mice you're feeding, um, you do that when you realize that after you feed there's barely any lump like you can barely tell that she just uh, he or she just ate a mouse then you're gonna want to bump up the quantity of mice that you're giving them so for example once Merlot I notice that she is not really having a big lump anymore after she eats a fuzzy I'm gonna start giving her two and once she's eating two and then I realize there's not a very big um, lump anymore then that's when you bump them up to the next size mouse which for her will be a hopper and for how often you feed them uh, it pretty much is just if you're a breeder or if you have a hatchling and they're pretty small You're gonna want to try to feed them every five days until they're a little bit larger when they're this size till they're adults I would recommend doing it once a week or every seven days, which is what I do and then once they become f uh, Like fully grown you could say and an adult I'd say around three to five years or so Start trying to feed them at once every ten days or so just because you don't want them to be overweight now this is Blizzard, my snow corn snake, as you guys have seen a lot. And the same rules for feeding apply to 
Blizzard just as much as they do to Merlot, and like I said, since uh, Merlot and Blizzard are a year apart, they're pretty much still doing the same feeding schedule. Blizzard is just on a uh, two size sizes bigger than Merlot. He's eating a, or she, sorry, is eating one small adult every seven days, and same with Blizzard. If one size can see that there is barely a lump. I'm gonna, like right around here, if I can barely see it, there's a lump, I'm gonna bump her up to um, giving her two small adults, and then once I don't see a lump anymore, I'm gonna be giving her large adults, or I might just go right to the rat pups since they're a bit more nutrient um, for snakes. Okay, so that is basically how you set up, have the setup for them, what bedding to use and everything, um, how often to feed, what to feed them depending on their size and everything. So now I'm going to go on to some facts and some tips. So now I have both of them out, and so some facts about them and some sort of husbandry and stuff you could say is that you can keep two corn snakes or two to three corn snakes in the same enclosure. If you have three, I'd recommend getting at least a 55 gallon or so so they each have a little bit of room and maybe have a couple more hides in there so that they don't get all defensive about where they want to go. So they are one of the only snakes that I know that you can keep together and I will be keeping these two together in the future. The best ones to keep together would be two females or three females because the females aren't going to really fight with each other or try to breed. Of course, so that's probably the best option that I would say, and since I'm lucky, these two are both females, so I will be keeping them together eventually, so it's a bit easier to keep and everything. Um, another thing too is that corn snakes are probably one of the easiest pet snakes, um, or reptiles in general, to breed. Um, so if you're looking to start doing some breeding and everything, corn snakes are a great choice, and there's many different pattern mutations and color variations and everything to get, um, and also to create as well. So always keep that in mind when looking for a corn snake, get one that looks cool, one that looks healthy and everything like that. And um, if you're doing some breeding, you can get, create some pretty cool combos. And another thing too is that they have very good temperaments as you can see. It's just kind of a handful trying to hold both of them with, you know, just one hand each. But um, they're very good temperament, like they have very good temperaments, they're very nice snakes and um, uh, even nice with each other. Like you always keep an eye on them when you have them out together, like I, I always keep an eye on them together but as you can see now and stuff they're they're fine they don't really no one really they don't really bother each other or anything like that they're good and another thing too is that they are just great beginner pets overall and they are really nice like I said and they are really good eaters like I've only blizzard is the only one who doesn't eat when she's going into shed I know sometimes ball pythons and other snakes tend to um, stop eating for a little bit and they're a bit more finicky to eat, but my two corn snakes and all the corn snakes that I know of that have been started properly eating um, are very good eaters, for the exception of like that one black motley that I was taking care of that never got started eating properly, which is the reason that it was a problem feeder and ended up passing away, unfortunately. But um, if they get started off properly, they're great eaters, great temperaments, awesome beginner snakes, can keep two together, great breeding, really easy. Um, so yeah. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, comment, uh, favorite if you'd like, and subscribe. And um, yeah, so there's Merlot and Blizzard. And um, hope some of these tips helped you. All right. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.